new hairstyle coming from our good friend from the athletic no i just don't feel like getting ready for you oh <laughs> <laughs> i mean look, I, I was wondering i'm like did sam not come and say that i'm looking at it looks coiffed it looks okay uh, maybe not now maybe not All that right. side. <laughs> <laughs> good morning sam good morning i'm, I'm gonna it's a perfect segue because dave you just called me off i air. did i did uh, and I just figured, you know, I thought that your YouTube channel would make my face famous. That's kind of the only reason I'm here. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I got roasted on the internet last couple of days for this interaction with Anthony Edwards. And and the best part is getting reminded that nobody knows what I look like because there's all these tags with people saying reporter, uh, reporter. Uh, I have nothing, I have nothing in my mentions. I don't know why I would highlight this, but uh yeah, you know, I, I just so now I figured, why do I need to comb my hair? Yeah, good point. I, and I love y'all, but like nobody's watching. Just right. <laughs> that, gee, wow. That was awesome. And that's it for Sam top, today. From the top rope. <laughs> if you're wondering, oh, oh, we'll get him though here. If you're yeah. wondering, uh, let's give you some context. We were helping him pump his pole before. We were, and, and we're going to help him even more now. Here's Sam uh, Amick uh, in, in Minnesota, excuse me, in Denver. Asking Anthony Edwards the now infamous uh, question here. Hey, you talked in that Phoenix series a lot about the way you saw Kevin and how that motivated you. And at your age, it's got to be fun to see all these OGs right in front of you. Is there anything like that in this series? Like, what's your. Nah, these guys, three, four years older than me, man. Yeah. I mean, now, let's just say, like, we'll do this movie style. Had that been the end of the question line, no issue. You know, Sam said, have you seen the, you know, you, you can play with some of these OGs. How cool is that? Did it, you know, Anthony is this. No, no, you had his answer. But then Sam decides to double down a little bit. I mean, Jamal's been around for a minute. Is that a guy that, that you've been tracking at all? Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> like I said, he, he, what is he, 27? So. I'm going to turn 23, dog. Yeah. KD 36, 35. Yeah. Come on, man. There's no disrespect to Jamal. I don't know what you're trying to start, but yeah, it's, he's no, not at all. Okay, so that's that was the thing. Well, Jamal, the, the whole thing seems to be, and by the way, this is the perfect show to break all of this down. Nobody, nobody more expert on uh, on 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 things than us. We're the perfect people to do this. So it comes down to is calling Jamal really? I mean, seriously. Okay. It's Anthony called, Edwards. That's the one. Say it again. It was Anthony Edwards. Yes, calling. it was Anthony Edwards. So it, it was it, actually somebody calling to give me a hard time about this interaction. Well, we're all having a blast with it. And as Sam alluded to, some of my favorite uh comments that I've highlighted here. Uh <laughs> um let's see. Uh you can tell this is a Denver reporter trying to hype Jamal Murray up. The reporter is trying to use words he thinks are cool. Oh, here's one. It's Sam Amick, one of the best national NBA reporters out there. Well, that's nice. But a lot of it seems the main controversy here is referring to Jamal Murray as an OG and did Sam make a mistake? Well, I've done some research and I present this without comment. First off, for those of you out there, what is... What is an OG? Well, what's the definition? I, I go to dictionary.com. Uh, OG, short for original gangster, is a slang term for someone who's incredibly exceptional, authentic, or old school. It is used now as a general term to praise someone who is an expert at something. So let's break that down. Is Jamal Murray incredibly exceptional? I think so. Uh, is he authentic? Yes. Is he somebody who's an expert at something? Yes. But that's not the issue. Is he old school? So I go back to Google uh, and Reddit, which is really where you should get all your information. How old do you have to be or what kind of experience do you have to have to qualify as an OG? Well, it says between 30 and 35 for women and 35 to 40 for men. But it also says anyone with 15 to 25 years of experience in any field of study, practice, or service should be considered an OG. So finally, Boom. Boom. Jamal, Jamal Murray came out of Kentucky at 19. This is his eighth season in the NBA. He missed one when he earned his ACL. Now, if you add in Kentucky, now we're up to 12 years, or excuse me, 10 years of experience. And then, of course, you have high school which is 14. I'm pretty sure he played in junior high. 
I think technically by the letter of the law, Sam, he meets all the requirements possible. So I'm wondering if, if you're expecting an apology. I am. But in the spirit yes. of, of Jamal Murray, there's not a lot of apologies in this uh, <laughs> Nuggets Wolf series. Right. That being said, uh, all fun aside, how fun is Anthony Edwards to cover? Like, seriously, charisma seems to drip out of this guy's pockets. He, he Everyone is just giving him his flowers, and they're so well due. How, how, how fun is it as a reporter to know that pretty much you can ask him, well, as you experience, you can ask him just about anything, and you may have the greatest soundbite of the day on your hands. No, I do love it. Um, it's funny. I haven't, thankfully, run into this often, but we all know the Internet, so for lack of a way, better way of putting it, and the Internet sucks in terms of, like, that gets clipped. What doesn't get shown is the next three minutes. I had been told by... Timberwolves PR, <clears throat> excuse me, in previous conversations, as I tried to learn about Anthony as a guy, that like he'd been getting better with the media, but that he 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 is like he is suspect of any reporter that he doesn't know. Like this is something that that I had already been kind of warned about, not in a negative way, but just trying to understand his personality. Mm -hmm. So that helped because after this little moment, I was laughing at myself in my head, like, all right, whatever, let's go take two. And we ended up having like three more questions that went really well and he gave a good session and i will always pick substance and style over you know uh cliches and and boring sound bites so he is a very interesting guy um you can see his mind working because the reality is that basketball wise he, he's his star is rising at an incredible rate right now and he's you know with that you you are figuring out how to catch up with the world that comes with it, if that makes sense. Um, but no, I, the guy's a lot of fun to cover so far. And you were there. So were you there for game two, Sam? Yeah, that was the funny part. Jay is like, this happened on, fr on Friday. Okay. Like, this, it didn't, it didn't is, I think complex sports is, you know, thanks a lot. Complex. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> the one that got it. <laughs> here's, here's the best part. And I got to get to the bottom of this uh -huh. is the guy who just called and interrupted your radio show. Yeah. Like, I think he has ties to the guy at Complex. I think uh, his brother, like his brother's one of the top guys. So I'm about to call and say thanks, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, go ahead, Jay. I well, so no, that, so I'm thinking. So you were there for game two, like that to me. Uh, of well, there's been so many different storylines in the playoffs, but going in, it was already okay. Wow, Minnesota won game one. Edwards was great. Game two, oh man, Gobert's going to be out. Um, hey, still they got one one. They'll be that. That's still a good situation. But the way they played, I, I, you know, again we're caught up in the the last thing we saw. But Sam, that was one of the best things I've ever seen watching it on TV. Defensively, you were there without Gobert too. Like how stunning in person was what Minnesota doing to Denver to you when you saw that live? Um, in incredibly stunning. I mean, I, I, here's the first thought that comes to mind. I don't know that I've ever seen this before. I'm sitting on press row. It's a little bit removed. You know, it's like top of the lower concourse seat. It's not a bad seat, but you're not on the floor. And <clears throat> there's a security guard or an usher standing behind press row, an older man. And I understand that, you know, just because you're an usher doesn't mean that you're not also a fan. You are. You live in Denver. You want the Nuggets to win. Like, to, to this guy was screaming and yelling as if he had spent five grand on a ticket and he's yelling at the refs and he's he's literally screaming about how the game is rigged which i thought was a funny look like for a, a, a team employee um but it spoke to the level of frustration in the building and what the timberwolves were doing to the defending champs not only x's and o's wise but honestly like spiritually their souls like they i like the nuggets group a lot this is not a good couple of days for the nuggets group they are not carrying themselves like champions i'm not trying to be corny about it but like that does come with it and jamal i actually just i'm sitting here having my breakfast talking to my younger son and and both you guys can relate to this we just had the good old talk about sportsmanship and class and how it doesn't matter how successful you are these are lessons that are, you know, part of the experience all the way through and how Jamal is a guy that I personally have really enjoyed covering and have done some good stuff with. 
And for him, I'm just, you know, I'm disappointed that he's handling this situation this way. And we'll get into those details. But, you know, it's reflective of what the Timberwolves are doing to, to Denver right now. I mean, they're just absolutely dominating him. Sam Amick of The Athletic joining us. Uh, do we have you to thank for the Defensive Player of the Year and MVP votes for DeMontis Sabonis? If so, congratulations. Yeah, that was wild. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I was Mr. Sabonis should be on the All-Star team. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I had him third team all NBA. That's good. Um, but uh, that was quite a, a thing. I mean, listen, man, if, if the players, not to get defensive, but, you know, players vote for the all-star um, voting and they have a vote, like they always have wild votes among the player selections. Like, yeah, I guess it's just like the human, you know, imperfection reality, like reporters are going to have some wild votes as well. But, but yeah, that was, uh, that was something. By the way, uh, just real quick. I, I noticed, I don't know if this is on all of them or most of them, but one of them was like 99 votes. Do you have any idea why it's not 100 or did somebody get sick or like not mailing their vote? Do you have any clarity on that? No, I mean, maybe they, honestly, it's just like a drop down menu. Maybe they messed it up. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good answer. Um. So Sam on, on the uh, MVP part that does go to Joker, not a huge surprise. Third time though, in four years, we debate whether he could have four in a row. Um, we all talk legacy, you know, what the, he's now gone to a special area of three time MVPs. Well, what do you think this kind of thing now does for him when you're talking about the greatest players of the league? Yeah. I mean, he was already, you know, there, um, I forget where he landed. You know, we have our, our NBA top 75 list that we did last year and, and he was pretty high on that list and he's, he's only getting higher. You know, I don't think. This series is just a reminder that when it comes to, you know, the question of how to stop the Joker, um, the Lakers kind of were the first team to really do it in the bubble back in 2020 when they threw Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee and Anthony Davis at him in waves. Because even though he is actually stronger than people realize, more physical than people realize, um, finesse is part of his game. And he needs to see passing lanes and he needs to see the rim. Um, and when you are just beating him up and then getting the benefit of the whistle, which is very physical right now, then, you know, then you're going to see Joker, um, you know, not not prevail every single time. But amazing player, uh, fantastic year. I feel just fine about my vote. I don't think it's one of those years where it's going to be an indictment. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's always I forget the numbers, guys, but it's been a while since the MVP, you know, was, was still in a good place in the playoffs when the award was announced, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. typically they're either eliminated already or well on their way. Um, so it's always a bit of an awkward time for the guys who win it. I'm actually looking at your 2022 NBA top 75. I am. I imagine that's changed because I got to like number 51. And I still hadn't seen the Okich. I was trying. I was trying to basically help you out on that. Like, well, keep going, and I'll see if I can. We're actually doing a the follow up. They're doing a top one hundred book uh, mm -hmm. based on all that work. We we kind of rewrote a bunch of the stories, and I don't even know to be honest if we've announced that yet. But you know, <laughs> look out for yeah, that. Yeah. Well, there yeah. you go. Second straight media screw up for Sam this week. <laughs> um, hey, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you when you came on. Okay, uh, no pretext, guys. I'm just going to ask him straight up and, and hope he wasn't listening. Sam Amick, give me the over under on games, if at all, suspended for Patrick Beverly. Um, and, and let me get I'm just going to say, I went in hard on a num on a minimum number, and the guys kind of pushed back on it. And I just want to see where you fall because I've got a thousand bucks to charity on the line for this one. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll go with my stream of consciousness, which was five thank god okay we're right. that is on the on the nose i said he's gonna get at least i i actually think it'll be more i said that you said 15 didn't i say he'll but didn't no, i say we said five or less jason and i said five wait a minute hold you on you said 15 wait i know i know i said 15 but what was the i thought i said he's gonna didn't i say he'll get at least five for the for the donation of charity or did i say it had to be 15 no i'm asking you said more than i i to be fair i think you said it's got to be more than five yeah. And if it's not more than five, we'll, we'll have to go. Well, yeah. I want to honor that, obviously. So we'll have to go back in here to get. Uh, yeah, I yeah, J uh, Sam, I was I was thinking like 
because you got previous incidents, you know, uh, you had the Chris Paul push in the back that then you have the way he treated the reporter with the podcast afterwards. Uh, and now you have the, so you have all those qualifications, which we know have been used for dream on green before. And then maybe I'm overthinking this, but you know, the only team worse to do this to would be the Pistons. You're doing this, you know, in, in, in the palace or the old palace, you're doing this against Indiana, which shouldn't matter. I get it. But just the optics of the whole thing. And you're, you're look, I get it. It's a basketball, but by the letter of the law, you assaulted two fans, one of which a lady in the side of the head, like, am I overreacting saying, I feel like this is something if, first off, if David Stern was alive, the dude would probably be out half the year. Secondly, that Adam should react pretty strongly to. Yeah, I think so. Um, now granted I'm admittedly biased. Um, I have, I have chosen to not interact with Pat for like two years now because he is notoriously rude to media mm. and I've never run into it, but it just bothers me. Um, and so, and you know, that, you know, I, I was not surprised with any of this stuff. Um, I just don't like the way he carries himself and not to make it about the media, but it is, I'll be totally honest with you guys. I kind of love the fact that, Throughout the regular season, there's it's just a handful of guys. There's a handful of guys who, who just do kind of treat media like garbage, and it it doesn't really get the public's attention during the regular season because the attention is not at the level that it is in the playoffs. I kind of it's going to sound you know like I, I'm, I'm putting salt in their wound here, but like I kind of love the fact that that you know in the playoffs guys are getting reminded that like the relationship does actually kind of matter between the media and the players. And, and, you know, these tough moments are going to happen. And then the reporters who are human are going to have to decide how they characterize certain things, you know, and, and do we give you a break? Do we not? And, you know, again, even to take it back to the Jamal thing, I didn't. And again, if somebody somehow didn't see it, Jamal throws a heat pack <clears throat> on yeah. the floor and also throws a towel and does the money sign at the referees. Yeah. Um, you know, Rudy Gobert got $100,000 for doing the money sign on its own. Jamal did three different things and got a $100,000 fine. Um, Mike Greenberg of ESPN, I was just watching right now, like very large platform, millions of people watching. And Greenberg just absolutely eviscerated Jamal Murray this morning. And again, Jamal's a guy that I like. But in terms of just the, the you know, that – concept of you know paying attention to the way you're portrayed um and handling yourself a certain way it should matter all the time uh and guys kind of in the playoffs they they, they get reminded sometimes in, in harsh ways yeah you know we're also witnessing we just saw game two last night sam in the east of the pacers and the knicks uh there was controversy in game one last two minute report reflected that uh, and the Pacers last night lose again. Rick Carlisle gets ejected, and apparently, you know, reportedly, they've submitted you know seventy eight questionable calls over two games, which maybe isn't even the entirety of their point, but just to show, hey, look, where's the love that we're? What are we getting missing out on here? Uh, right. What what's your belief on kind of the way the Pacers are handling it, the perception of officials in the league, and just kind of in, in involved in this series? Um, it's one thought Jay is like, man, I, I don't know the whole crew with that New York game, but I did notice Mark Davis and I was like, man, Mark is having himself a couple yes. of days here. Yeah. Mark was a, one of the officials <laughs> at game two where you had Michael Malone just screaming in his face and, and Mark doesn't tee him up. Um, so a lot of intensity and controversy in that game. And then of course, again, last night, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think Rick made a mistake, Rick Carlisle in going down the small market road um, and acting like that was a factor here, you know, like others have pointed out, you know, Oklahoma city and, and uh, in Minnesota are dominating on their side of the bracket. So I don't think, you know, the, you know, the logic holds up there and yes, the Knicks are a great story, but um, the reality is the Knicks are a far more physical team than the Pacers and that's helping them right now. So I, I get it. The refs in general, are a, a major storyline right now because the league has kind of unofficially decided to go back to like 80s basketball, you know. Um, Josh Hart shoving Tyrese Halliburton with two, you know, two hands in the back, like the type of thing you can see yeah. from 50 feet away and there's no whistle. So, you know, you're seeing the frustration. 
And there, there's a factor here too, and that is the which we haven't really seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Knicks are relevant, and with the, the, the Knicks are at the center of quite a few conspiracy theories over the years, starting with the the Ewing frozen envelope. But I, I got to imagine if this was Indy versus uh, Orlando, we're not having these conversations as much. No, every time it's a New York or a Lakers, not not a not a Clippers, but a Lakers. Well, the Lakers is true though. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot who I was talking to. Uh, Sam, just going back to the, can I go back real quick to the? Um, you know, we talked about Patrick Beverly. You kind of dovetailed into Jamal Murray. Yeah, I, right. I, I just I just want to go back to that. Like, I, I can you stand in front of the NBA in any way? I I can't help but think if the Nuggets were up two zero. Uh, that Murray, how how do you throw multiple things on the court? You know, again, we didn't want to over dramatize the, the 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 Patrick Beverly's ball throwing, but both are potentially very dangerous and highly highly against the rules. I understand. By the way, I thought the fine was about double what he was going to get, and I feel like this is the NBA saying, "All right, you're down 2-0. We don't want to make this a part of the series." Uh, we're just going to double the fine we would have given you. And, but, and again, I, I think I saw the numbers. It's three tenths of what his salary is. So whatever. D- do you feel like the NBA missed the mark on suspending him or, or, or can you stand in front of them? No, I think they missed the mark. I mean, I said that night that I thought it would just be a fine. Yeah. But that is also, I didn't know at the time that he also threw a towel and that he did the money sign. So I was only. Wow. Reacting. Yeah, I was reacting to just the heat pack. Um, and then, you know, you add into it the fact that Jamal has not spoken to the media after either of the two games in this series. And now the first one was just, you know, he broke a rule. The second one, he broke a rule again, but then also, you know, failed to respond to the controversy of the night and the thing that he had done. And then, you know, he gets in front of the cameras yesterday and, it was pretty defiant um, and kind of gaslighting reporters. So, no, I mean, I think a suspension would have been in order. And, you know, and, and I mean, Adam Silver's done a lot right in this league, but discipline and kind of having the iron fist like David Stern used to is is typically not one of them. There have been moments, you know, right. um, but typically that's not part of the profile. Sam, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about all the playoff teams. Non-playoff team in Charlotte hired a new coach in Charles Lee. Lakers did make the playoffs, but they're, they're looking for a coach. What, what are you, uh, what are you hearing about their coaching search? And is Vogel going to leave? Just let me throw that in there yeah. too. I know that's on the horizon. Yeah, I don't have clarity on Vogel. Um, I, it feels like HBO, Matt HBO, the Suns owner, is going to have a tough call there because, you know, even at our place, Sham Sharania. Um, had reported some tough stuff on the dynamic between the players and, and Vogel. So that's something they've got to analyze. Um, you know, Charles Lee is a longtime assistant uh, who's been involved in a lot of head coaching searches and, you know, finally getting his chance. I do find it ironic. It's it's the same type of path. He used to work with Darvin Ham in Milwaukee as part of Mike Budenholzer's staff. So we'll see if, if Charles fares better than, than Darvin did and lasting only two years. Um, the Lakers coaching search, there's a lot of names right now. I don't know exactly if they've sat in front of anybody yet, but, um, to me, rather than going down the entire list, I will say the one that I find the most interesting and unique is the idea that JJ Reddick's candidacy is real. And, you know, that, I mean, I think he's a super bright guy and and it would be interesting, but it's also, um, just funny to me that you know, the, the chess, not checkers component of JJ starting a podcast with LeBron James, mm. you know, within the past couple months, you know, it feels like, you know, is this kind of something they've been working on on the side? I don't know. Um, but you know, a lot of names as part of that coaching search as well. Are you willing to confirm or deny that if extension talks don't go anywhere with Mike Brown's agent, that the Lakers might make overtures to him? I'm just starting crap. I'm just starting stuff. I was like, damn. I'm just, just <laughs> no, I'm just starting stuff. I'm just having- with, and I, you know, I, Mike's had a very good couple of years. I don't know that, uh, you know, Mike's Laker history. He doesn't like, want any part of that. Fire <laughs> Genie Bus to hire him again. Uh, you know, you go from Sacramento to L. Oh, that's like, that's like going from swimming to walking on Legos. I don't want to. 
Well, you know, like swimming, there's no okay. resistance. Walking on Legos, ow. Uh, all right. <laughs> Thanks. You can Sam. Envision, like a pool that, like the worst possible type of, of like, you know, flooring for a pool. Is, is <laughs> yeah, like those concrete ones that hurt your feet when you die. Yeah, I'm with you, Sam. Uh, yeah. Last thing, we got a break. Uh, Sam, would you agree? I don't know. I was thinking about this since the beginning of the interview. Are Jason and I OGs? By the letter of the law, we are, aren't we? It's like past OGs. You're like the next phase. Wow. Oh, (laughs) washed. Double. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There's OG, there's double OG, and there's washed. (laughs) And since you decided to roast me today, Dave, um, and I know we got to go. Oh, God. I'm just going to leave you with this, and it's courtesy of our friend, neighbor John, who texted yeah. me. He says, just remember, you've never introduced Pete Rose as the home run king on your radio show. <laughs> yeah. And thanks, John. I saw that on the text line. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. The area code 408 on John's phone number. You guys figure out the rest of the uh, the numbers. and uh, crank We'll get there eventually. Sam, you're the best. Uh, appreciate it. Love you on Twitter. Looking forward to more uh, more young reporters out of Denver asking silly questions. Uh, have, have, have a great week. Thanks, guys. See you. Yeah, that's uh, Sam. Maybe we'll take a break. Uh, hey, listen, when we come back, Nicole Jokic wins the uh, third 